Hey there, it's Sandman. Welcome to the latest edition of The Coolest Guy I Know. I'm not sure what edition. I uh, lost count a long time ago. But my special guest today is Brandon Kay. Hello. He is one of our freelancers at 103GBFrocks.com. That means we pay him to blog. That's not a bad gig. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. Definitely, definitely. I want to talk a little bit about um, what got you started writing. Because your writing is very, very tasty, very... Very well written. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know. I started writing, I guess, when I was a kid. You know, I wrote terrible stories, and then I went to school, and I got progressively better. Went to college, got even better. And then I decided I wanted to do copywriting, and I decided I didn't like copywriting because it wasn't very tasty or fun. Right. So then I just kind of started blogging and writing articles, and uh, went from there. So what inspires you to write? Some gross stuff. You wrote a few, written a few articles that were yeah kind of gross, involving poo and things like that. Right, really, it's just uh, true life. Because <laughs> I wake up and it's right there before me, so all I have to do is write about it. Uh, I got two cats that are gross, uh, two kids that are gross. A lot of gross <laughs> things happen to me, so uh, I just I just observe the world and take it in and put it on paper or computer screen. Good thing you didn't say your wife is gross, because she'll probably watch this. Right, she probably will, and then I'd probably be on the couch again. <laughs> now, Brandon, you are a uh, heavy metal fan, yes. uh, I'm pretty sure. Absolutely. Um, tell me a few bands that you are really into. Uh, my favorite would be the Acacia Strain. Um, I definitely love, well, let me see the ones that I can say. Uh, Cattle Decapitation. Uh, dying fetus, stuff like that. I go on the heavier end of the spectrum, but I'm also a big Deftones fan, like 311, uh, all kinds. What would be a band that would surprise me out of your list of the genre you like? Like a guilty pleasure, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I like 80s New Wave, so Drain Drain. Um, let's see, I also really like uh, Witch House Music. So I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, it's it's a whole it's a whole thing. You'll have to check it out. There's a guy called Picture Plane. He's really cool. He's got this poppy kind of eighty sound. I will check it out. Yeah. Talking to Brandon K. He's a, the coolest guy I know for this episode. Anyway, <laughs> I think he'll be cool next week too. I hope so. He, he blogs a lot for 103gbfrocks.com. Be sure and check out his writings. Um, I noticed one of your uh, blogs was about uh, three bands you hate. Yes. And uh, first and third were Nickelback. Yes, I definitely despise Nickelback, and I saw where Avril Lavigne has broken her union with uh, Chad Schm or, uh, Chad Kroger. And You're uh, calling Chad Ted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, well, that's all right. That broke my heart, as you can tell. Uh, but I, I clearly, I just don't respect their musical integrity or style and it kind of irks me that they sell so many records and people keep going to their concerts kind of like Adam Sandler movies. I'll tell you here's my take on Nickelback and I like them because I own a store and I sell their product you mm -hmm. know and that's a hot selling product. Sure. Nickel course, Nickelback right. is music for the radio, music for the masses but I don't think they're a band that you can get passionate about. I used to say that about like collective soul, right? You know, you like them, you don't like them. There's kind of an in between, but I don't know if there's a lot of Nickelback fans that just follow them on tour wherever they go. They're done with their tour because Chad's having vocal surgery, and uh, you know, yeah, if it's your wish, they'll be done for good. Yeah, that'd be fine with me. <laughs> I'm sure they can find another crappy uh, guy with curly hair to cut it short, and right? Take over <laughs> vocals. You know, most bands usually do, but. Uh, you know, I mean, I have to respect the, the fact that they've got it down to a science, what they do, and they make a lot of money, so you can't hate on them for that reason. Right. I just don't like their music. I think it's generic, and it's like phoned in. That's how I feel about it. There's a lot of very formulated music. I mean, radio is, I think, made for that. That's what bands, I think, want to achieve. Most bands, they're just kind of hard rock, hard rock, pop rock. They want to get on the radio, so you get a lot of Three Days Grace and Breaking Benjamin and bands like that. I do like those bands, but I also understand why people don't like those bands. 
because they are somewhat predictable. Um, how about a classic rock band you might like? Um, I don't listen to a lot of classic rock. However, when I was brought up, I was given the tapes that my dad gave me. So I listened to a lot of Def Leppard, Billy Idol. Um, I would consider Metallica some classic rock. Yeah. So I listen to a lot of that kind of stuff. Black Sabbath? Yeah, I listen to a little bit of Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne. Um, I hate to admit it, but Foreigner, Extreme, stuff like that. Well, I listen <laughs> to that too, sure. Yeah. Um, now, you know, you probably wouldn't catch me listening to it anymore. No, no, no. no <clears> excuse no. me, but, uh, you know, that's that's kind of the roots of my uh, what I was brought up on. I remember the first time I w was able to purchase cassettes on my own. My dad gave me $20, and I went to Target, and I bought the Metallica Black album, and uh, Motley Crue, Dr. Feelgood. That was like my introduction to hard rock, I'd say. Those are two le pretty legendary albums, sure. really. Yeah. yeah. And even though I believe Metallica's stuff before that was better. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that was my introduction, and then I found Korn. Well, Nirvana first, then Korn, then Hatebreed. And then I was like, wow, Hatebreed's the, the heaviest band I've ever heard in my life. And then it just keeps going and going. Now I, I've found a lot of bands that I can't talk about on here because it's not PG-13, so... Well, yeah, well, I know you said there's some titles you couldn't say. Sure. Uh, why do you think that Evansville hasn't been host to uh, that genre, you know, of the bands you like the most? I think they're, well, it's not really music for the masses. I think it's more of a, a, a niche audience. But, but they I think can play there's the... a lot of people that love it because, yeah. I mean, I know that I've seen two heavy metal bands that have come through here. One was Full of Hell, and they played at PG, the cafe on Franklin Street. Yeah. And the other was uh, Carnifex, and they brought a whole bunch of bands. And Carnifex is a major label, another one of my favorite metal bands. And they played at a place called Boney Junes, which I don't believe exists. Anymore. I don't think it has anything yeah. either. But that, that's the only really metal shows I've ever seen. And as far as like mainstream acts, I just don't know if they could draw an audience to sell out the Ford Center. I mean, Rock is having a hard time in this right, town, that's right. for sure. It, I, I feel like it's more of a country music and, as you said, more of like a, a Nickelback mainstream consuming uh, audience here. Well, before, it's kind of a shame. Well, before we go, I want to play a little word association with you, and okay. I'm not prepared this at all. Okay. So Me I'm going to throw these out. Well, see, that's perfect. It's yeah. spontaneity. Sure. So, uh, first, poop. <laughs> uh, kids. <laughs> Or you could have said cats, right? Yeah, that was the first thing that came to mind, but kids, too, because that was the most recent. Speeding ticket. Uh, wife. <laughs> and worry. Car insurance. Worry. <laughs> and increase. Heavy metal. Love it. Beer. Like it. But not love it. No. Let me guess. Uh, whiskey, bourbon. Nah, I don't really drink it. Vodka. That was what I first started drinking when I started drinking, and it was Dark Eyes, and it was $10 a fifth, and it was awful. Iced tea. Sweet. I meant the artist. Oh, man, he has a nice wife. I was just kidding. <laughs> I got nothing else, man. Those are off the top of my head. Excellent. And, uh, you know, um, I love your writing because it's, it's a little subversive. It's a little twisted. I think that rock people that live the rock lifestyle appreciate that. They appreciate gross stuff and horror. Like, for instance, what's your favorite horror movie? Oh, man. Um, or a recent, gosh, there's so many. recent favorite. I'd say, like, uh, probably House of a Thousand Corpses or Devil's Rejects. And the Evil Dead remake was very good as well. I've been very fortunate to have interviewed Rob Zombie on like three occasions. Oh, that would have been very awesome. He is an amazing man, very nice man. So uh, I'm hoping you'll get some uh, interviews for uh, our website you can blog about too. You yeah, definitely. Know. I'd like to. I, I'm, I'm going to try and reach out. No one knows who I am, so it's kind of hard at this moment to just talk to somebody and say, hey, let me interview you, but I'm going to give it a shot. Tell them you're with 103 GBF. That's the key to any door. Definitely. Brandon K, <laughs> coolest guy I know. Thank you so much for Thank coming you, in. Sir, man. I appreciate it.
And uh, check him out. Check out his vlogs at 103gbfrocks.com. He uh, is pretty active uh, a couple times a week at least. Yeah, I try to do at least a couple a week. Uh, definitely give you one, sometimes three. And we pay so, you too. Yeah, that's that's a perk. I like doing it. So uh, if you don't like it, leave comments. If you like it, leave comments. Just leave comments. And if I can comment, I don't remember the Joy Division being a heavy metal band. No, they weren't. Uh, they were a pretty sad band. Yeah. And <laughs> their lead singer uh, took his own life in the kitchen, and then what was left of Joy Division went on to form New Order, and they played poppy, upbeat music. And I kind of wonder if there's a correlation, because you look at Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters, who was in Nirvana with Kurt Cobain, who allegedly took his own life, and now he plays poppy, upbeat music, where they used to play grungy, down, sad music. That is a that is a possible correlation. Yeah, we'll let uh, the listener and the viewer ponder. Yeah, sounds good. Maybe they can weigh in. All right. Well, thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the 103 GBF YouTube channel. I think we have a link up in one of these corners uh, for you to click on and do that. And uh, you could win a prize just for doing so. So, uh, Brandon K, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you for watching. We'll thank talk you. to you again soon.